Up until only a few years ago, Tony Stark's family was nothing worth making a video over. But like with all Marvel properties, no matter how much they establish a backstory, there's always room for a plot twist to shake things up and question parentage. The Iron Man comics are slightly more grounded compared to other properties like the X-Men families I go on and on about, but things do get kind of wild now and again. Before our main man Tony, the Stark family has four other generations of backstory, but unfortunately, very limited information. It all started with Isaac Stark Sr. This man right here started Stark Industries back in the 1800s. Obviously nowhere near the amount of influence the company has in the current Marvel Universe, but even then, Stark Industries was a manufacturing titan that came up with inventions focusing on defense, weapons mainly, and some aerospace engineering. The headquarters was built up in Long Island, and the family, along with the business, have centered around New York since. After his death, the business would pass down to his son, Isaac Jr., then Howard Sr. There's a trend behind families when it comes to Marvel's writers and their naming formats. You see it in my Wolverine video, the Osborns, and now Starks. If the characters aren't relevant enough, they just get a senior or junior name. It speeds up the creative process and makes things easier for all of us to remember them. Oddly enough, all the families I just named happened to be wealthy too. Howard Stark Sr. was the one to build a townhouse in New York back in 1932 that now houses the Avengers. Y'all know it as Avengers Mansion. And with him being a senior, you know who's next on the family tree. Howard Jr. is very different from the Starks before him. Yes, he's also a super genius inventor, but he's very relevant in the comics. Movies, shows, whatever it is, this character helped shape this world through Stark Industries. Howard Jr. started S.H.I.E.L.D. In 1960, there was still a lurking Nazi threat on the world, so a bunch of high-tech super spies were needed to put them down, and any other terrorist organization. So really, he was a hero without the iron suit. Howard is the one who propelled this family business to a world superpower with that billionaire status. And in some mediums like the movies, he's considered the company's founder. A whole novel can be written on just one of his adventures trying to save the world. Howard Jr.'s a fully fleshed out character. I only say novel instead of comics because I don't know if he's flashy enough to warrant all those illustrations. Just old school reading would suffice. A less relevant character is Howard's brother, Edward. He was nowhere near as ambitious as his brother, so decided to sell off his shares of the family business to him and relieve himself of all responsibilities. Edward would have a son named Morgan, who would have trouble accepting him being left out of Stark Industries. Even though Morgan had a hefty inheritance that wasn't enough, it would take out his frustrations on the family throughout the Iron Man comics, becoming somewhat of a reoccurring antagonist. Just like his brother Edward, Howard would have a son. He married a woman named Maria Carbonell. Look, a female. So a lot of big name titles over at Marvel came out in the 60s. And that's why the female ancestry is just left out. It's usually only the main character's mom that gets a bit of backstory, if you can even call it that. While both are New Yorkers, Howard and Maria met in Monaco and hit it off from the start. She also came from a rich family. These are Tony's parents, while his full name is Anthony Edward Stark. Little Tony had a lot to live up to, with his father being one of the most accomplished people alive. And he met all these expectations. Another super genius inventor in the Stark family. Tony had a little bit of a crazy dangerous side because of how easy and boring everything was to him. It's this attitude that gives him the cojones to fly around in a weaponized suit of armor. But it's not like Howard was without his flaws either. He did have a bit of a drinking problem. The two, father and son, never had the best relationship. Howard had a coldness to him, and there was a lot of conflict in the household when he was around and not busy at work neglecting his family. All this wealth and power that Howard was bringing to Stark Industries began to breed jealousy throughout the tech world. Howard and Maria would be killed in a quote-unquote car accident when Tony was only 21. He may have graduated a lot earlier than the vast majority, but he was thrust in taking over the daily operations of the family business at a very young age. The car wreck was actually an assassination plot by competitors trying to take Howard out of the picture. This led to Tony taking life a bit more seriously since he had to take on the responsibility of the transfer of power. All this backstory wasn't spicy enough for the more current writers over at Marvel. So in the 2012 run of the Iron Man comics, a question about Tony's two parentage is raised. He finds out he's adopted, but we wouldn't find out all the details until a whole other serialization in 2016 called International Iron Man. It was time to make up for all the calm and collected storylines from the past and sprinkle some absurdity into Tony's origin. 
but a secret adoption doesn't elicit the perfect jaw-dropping moment that you kind of expect from comic books though. A hidden brother kept away from everyone out of fear of the alien robot that delivered him is the kind of plot twist with enough shock value to get it done though. Before Tony finds out who his real estranged parents are, he discovers his adopted brother, Arno. He's the exact same age as Tony and has been living out his days in the Maria Stark Foundation Hospice out in California. At the time of their meeting, I think they're in their early 40s, maybe late 30s. It's kind of hard to gauge their ages since Tony has to remain middle-aged throughout decades of comics. During all this time in the hospice, Arnold was very well aware of Tony and the rest of his family. He's been watching all the daily news reports about his brother constantly saving the day. He even understands why he has to be hidden away. When Maria was pregnant with Arno, they found out the child wouldn't survive. Howard, the great problem solver that he was, went looking for a way to save their unborn son. And of course he found one. An intelligent robot built by aliens was being held at Area 52. So Howard broke it out of there in hopes his superior knowledge would know of a way to save the child. It was able to save their son, but at a cost. The robot, called 451, saw a lot of potential in Earth and humans. It didn't want any other worldly forces destroying this planet. 451 told Howard and Maria that in return for curing their unborn son, it would have to also alter the child to ensure it can be the world's savior, capable of technologically advancing the planet in order to fight off alien threats in the future. If this sounds too good of a deal to be true, it's because it was. Yes, 451 was going to alter unborn Arno and make it a super genius, but also see to it that he lives a short life. Within his DNA, 451 planned to implement a suicide gene. After about 30 years, it'll kick in and Arno would take his own life. 451 saw it as a way of following Alexander the Great's footprints, burning brightly and then burning out. Luckily, Howard found out before Arno's DNA was altered and worked behind 451's back to alter his alterations. A little confusing, I know. But after the child was born and seemingly healthy, 451 took off, never to see Howard, Maria, or Arno again. But a problem arose with Howard's meddling into Arno's DNA. The baby started wheezing soon after birth. The doctor told the new parents that Arno would never breathe without medical assistance. To make things worse, if 451 ever returned to Earth, there is no telling how it would react to its golden child being reduced to a bedridden state. They were afraid of what it was capable of, so hid Arno away and adopted a new child. Howard didn't like the idea of thinking of Tony as a decoy son, because they really did love him. But Tony does think this is the case when he finds out the truth. You can really see how hurt Tony is, hearing how much his parents were able to share with Arno while he feels they barely spoke to him. But Arno was able to lift his brother's spirit, reassuring their love was real. Yeah, he kinda was a decoy, but that role landed him a cozy lifestyle. Well, up until he was kidnapped and cornered to make his beta Iron Man suit and escape. And on the bright side, the decoy did work. 451 never found out Tony and Arno were two different people. It's not like it was going to ask what Howard and Maria were going to name their natural son. Don't think robots care about that kind of thing. So for all 451 knew, all of Tony Stark's accomplishments as Iron Man were because of its genetic meddling. But nope, that was all Tony. When 451 finally does confront Tony, he's confused why he didn't turn out to be what he expected. So it deletes itself believing a miscalculation was made. Arno does seem to be pretty bright, but his character is a pretty complicated one. Now with 451 out of the picture, Arno is free to go out and try to live a fuller life, no longer in hiding or isolation. When reading through all the Iron Man issues that he's a part of, you don't really know what direction his character development is heading. He's nothing like the jealous asshole cousin Morgan, but his eagerness to change the world was hinting at a dark turn. He never really goes full on villain, but when he finally does put on an Iron Man suit, it's clear he's a threat to the world. I don't know if I should go full spoilers here, because the Arnold story arc literally only concluded this year. So there's 8 years worth of story I'm sure a lot of you guys would rather experience firsthand as opposed to my high speed summaries. I'll just say a mad scientist with good intentions usually does make for a compelling antagonist. He's not just crazy for the sake of being crazy. If it wasn't for his delusions, Arno would be a very likable character. And he suffers from these delusions because of the side effects of Howard's hasty intervention with his DNA. Throughout all the conflict, Tony and Arno really do care for each other as brothers. 
Despite Arnold's massive fear of artificial intelligence because of the whole 451 situation, he actually recreated his parents after he was freed from his hospital bed. He uploads Howard and Maria's thoughts and memories into machines originally made by his father as weapons. They're called Arsenal and Mistress. He clearly wanted a true parent-child relationship he was deprived of all his life. As for Tony's real parents, he finally gets a chance to reunite with his birth mother, an international Iron Man. Her name is Amanda Armstrong, who was a traveling musician who was part of a rock band before the time of Tony's birth. Her stage name was Amanda Strong. While this all started as a very real career and passion, Amanda would one day be confronted by a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who was interested in recruiting her as intelligence. It would be difficult for a Hydra terrorist to suspect a secret agent when traveling the world comes natural to a touring musician. Amanda mainly accepted the offer because of the promise of a record deal and all the S.H.I.E.L.D. connections to propel her music career. On the job, she met a man named Jude, a fellow S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, and the two would begin a romantic relationship. Two years later, Amanda would find out she's pregnant with Jude's child. Jude, the idiot that he was, thought this would be the perfect time to tell Amanda he was a double agent, working with Hydra, one week before the due date at that. Jude said that Hydra set him up so they can disappear without ever having to worry about S.H.I.E.L.D. again. She killed him right there and then. Well, he would be resurrected later on by Hydra, but that's just how comic books go. Amanda decided to give the baby up for adoption in Bulgaria. Her only instructions were for S.H.I.E.L.D. to find her son a happy home that he keeps the name Anthony. Howard Stark overhears the agents bitching about the handling of the task and makes sure to pay that orphanage in Bulgaria a visit. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I haven't even mentioned Pepper Potts yet, an integral part of Tony's life. In the comics, their romantic relationship is nowhere near as explored as the films in the MCU. While Pepper is now clearly the main love interest for Tony, for a long time, they only just flirted with the idea of being together. For most of the story, she was with his bodyguard Happy. Pepper, whose real name is actually Virginia Potts, only got this nickname because of her hair color and freckles. There's no marriage between her and Tony, and definitely no daughter named Morgan. Morgan's a whole different Stark in this family tree. But I think the whole father-daughter relationship in Avengers Endgame between Tony and Morgan was a nice addition to their version of the story. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this family tree video wasn't the highest on my priorities until you guys outvoted my planned video when I set up a poll on one of my community posts on here. I always thought the Richards family from Fantastic Four was super interesting. The 4,000 people here obviously don't agree with me, but I know the movies haven't done them the best service. They can't even come close to competing with the Iron Man and Avengers films. Maybe one day I'll circle back to it. But all the comments I got in my House Stark video joking about where is Tony Stark made me pretty excited to post this. Plus talking about Arno is always fun. Anyways, I'll see you guys in a bit with something else to talk about. Thanks for watching.